Today, we're gonna figure out how to make those perfect black tumblers, so stick around. Hey everybody and welcome. If this is your first time here, my name is Roy. If you've been here before, well, welcome back. Today, we're gonna talk about blocks. More specifically, how do you get a perfect black tumbler? I'd love to tell you I have a magic wand or the perfect ink or the perfect printer or some special tool or a voodoo doll or something. The reality is there is no special one thing you can do. It's actually a combination of doing a lot of things. Perfect time, perfect pressure, perfect temperature, uh, making sure that you have a good print on sublimation paper with good ink. And we'll talk about all of that um, in this video. The reality is your time, temperature, and pressure just have to be more accurate when you're doing a black tumbler. So the good news is once you get the perfect time, temperature, pressure, and all of that, and you get great blacks, that's your recipe for every tumbler. There shouldn't be a need to have a different time, temperature, and pressure for other colors over black. You get it dialed into black and you've got it. So how do you do that? I'm gonna go through my time, temperature, and pressure, and how I trim my images and all of that. But at the end of the day, you have a different tumbler press than I do, and it's gonna be a little bit different. Some people do two rotations, some people do four rotations. I do four rotations, and I'll get into that in a, in a little bit. But here's my suggestion for trying to get that perfect time, temperature, and pressure. First, let's take a look at the leeway you have when you're doing a regular design and not black. Let's talk about the three important elements of a regular design, time, temperature, and pressure. You have a decent amount of leeway with all three of these, meaning you could press a tumbler a few degrees more or a few degrees less, and you could have a little bit more time or a little bit less time, and your pressure could be a little bit lighter or maybe closer to medium, and you're still gonna come out with a great tumbler. But when we're talking about blacks, that leeway is reduced. Your time, temperature, and pressure are now much more critical in getting perfect results. So here's my suggestion for getting the, uh, the perfect time, uh, temperature, and pressure. As far as pressure goes, do it light. That's the easy one. There are people out there that try to do too much pressure. You really need very, very little pressure. What I did when I was first starting out, well, technically when I was first starting out, I, I don't remember what my time and temp was, but uh, I was doing regular tumblers and they were okay. And then I did a black tumbler and it wasn't. And so I decided, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna figure out black. Come to find out that black was then the perfect recipe for everything else. The way that I did that was I got some old tumblers that had messed up and I baked them off and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. This is an old one that didn't come out good. So I put it in the convection oven for uh, about 45 minutes at 400 degrees and bake most of the design off. This should work fine for what we're gonna do today. This works great for testing out the black and figuring out exactly what your time and temperature is. That's the first thing you've gotta do. Now. Pressure also has something to do with it. That's one reason why I personally press four times rotating it between presses. Because I figure if there's an element, part of the heating element that's not um, working as well as the others, that additional rotation will help even out the entire uh, tumbler during the, the overall process. So bake off some tumblers that are messed up and use those as tests. If your black comes out on the green side, you haven't baked it, long enough or had enough time. And if it turns brown, then you've baked it for too long or too high a temperature. So what you wanna do is play around with those. I can guarantee you, well, I can't guarantee you, but I'm gonna just about bet that if you got six or eight old tumblers and printed out six or eight black sheets and started working on it, you could hone down to that perfect um, that perfect time and temperature. And remember, you're not looking for edges and you're not looking for uh, the seam. You're just wanting to get solid black. So you might only do one rotation or, or you, you about have to do two, but you might only do two rotations and you might be seeing a spot on there that's not working well. That's probably the press. So 
Maybe you invest in a better press if it was an inexpensive press, or what I'd do first is try to just do more rotations. There are people that have uh, green or brown at the edges. Brown, of course, means it's overcooked. Green means it's undercooked. And some people, depending on their press, have to pull that out a little bit and bake the top or bottom a little extra. You've got to figure that out. It depends on what your press and your heating element um, uh, will do. So you have gotten your perfect time and your temperature and your pressure by using rebaked messed up tumblers. Okay, so we've checked that off. Now what we want to do is we want to work on the seam and the edges. And I also have a video on, I don't know if I mentioned, I have a video on the baking, uh, on baking off a design. So definitely go check that out. I'll put a link in the description. I also have a couple of videos on perfect seams and perfect um, edges. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but I do want to show you very quickly how I trim the image so that I can get a pretty good uh, seam. So I have a better advantage of getting a good seam and good edges. So let's take a look. Um, uh, all of the, the equipment that I use, uh, there are links in the um, description on where to purchase it. So some of these links are affiliate links, which basically means it doesn't cost you any more. And I might get a couple of cents for you purchasing it through that link. Uh, it's a great way to support the channel without costing you anything. So let's trim this. Let's assume that this is the top of the design. Um, I take a piece of paper and set over it. And the reason is because a while back I was doing a, a, an almost black design and my palm pulled a little bit of the ink up. And so I always put just a piece of paper down, a, a piece of scratch paper down to be able to make sure that I'm not messing up that color. So what I do is I take my ruler and I put it right on the edge and I've got the, see how that's stuck? So I have the design so it's the exact size of my, um, uh, what I need. All right, so let's, uh, I get it as close as possible. Now, this is the bottom. I mean, this is solid black, but we're gonna assume this is the bottom. So now, I go back, here's my top. I come over to the right side in, on most designs. Sometimes I do the left, but most of the designs that I make, I put the, um, the cut, the trim on the right side. So I get that really close where I can barely see it. By the way, all of the designs that I'm using today are available for purchase on my website. It's industrialfrenchdesigns.com. There will be a link in the description. So definitely check that out. I have one section called Fun Super Secret Designs or something like that. And I'll add um, uh, really cool designs, but I don't leave them there for long. So you definitely want to check back. Okay, and then the final side, I leave just a little teeny bit, a little teeny strip I come out just a hair and cut it and there is my final. So this is what it looks like if that were the top of the design. Okay, now that we've got it trimmed, we want to um, wrap one, but let me, let me show you something that I do that I think has saved my butt on more than one occasion. I get old paper towel rollers and I roll this image up, be very careful. I roll it up into a little ball and then I take it, I put it in there and I let it sit. Sometimes I let it sit for a few days, but in a perfect world, it sits for about half a day. And this is what happens. This is what it looks like once I've um, left it in there. This was left in the paper towel center um, a little bit long, but let me show you what it does. So you take your tumbler, in this case I'm going to use a rebaked tumbler. You open this up a little bit and set it on there and look at that. We can take the tumbler then and actually let me just do it. So what I'll do is take my tape and again everybody wraps, wraps differently, but for me I found this to work. So I put one piece of tape in the middle and then I 
let this thing on in there like that, and then I'll flip it upside down. I learned that from Tamara at RTS Sublimation Blanks. And then what I do is I take the, the paper and I just sort of push it down like that, and it's already wrapped around because I've had it in the uh, paper towel uh, holder for a while. So I'll take it and then hold my, my thumb, push around, and push that nice and tight. So the paper is now tight against the tumbler and that's exactly what you want. So I will continue wrapping this. Let me set this here, make sure it doesn't roll. I don't think I talked about the paper printer or ink that I use. I use HTV Rot and Text Print, although lately I've been leaning a lot more towards the HTV Rot. Um, I'm basically using it all the time. And I have an Epson Workforce 7710. It's a cartridge based printer. I use Cosmos ink in that printer. And then I have an Epson ET2800 Echo Tank printer and I use Cyclone ink in that. And I just gotten that Cyclone ink and really, really love it. Those colors, the Cyclone ink colors pop. So definitely, definitely check them out. So you've gotten the time, temperature, and pressure so your blacks are black. So you've checked that off. Now you really wanna focus on the, uh, the seam and the edges. Again, go back and look at the video I made um, about that. We will go over it again one more time. I take one piece of tape, uh, tape out. Now I am using two, um, two widths of tape and this tape dispenser, and I love it because I'll use the smaller piece of tape to go around the top. I'm not putting a lot of pressure here. I'm just getting it so that when I push this in, that it's flat in this area. And we know that the paper's flat against the tumbler because of the way we initially wrapped it, and that's really, really important. Now I'm gonna go around and I'm going to take any little area that may look like there's a blemish, and I'm gonna push that up with my, my thumb. Once I've done that, on the top, I'll take the larger tape and put it on there, and I'm gonna pull really tight. Sometimes I snap it off, I pull so tight. And this is most important with blacks because you got to get that to um, you got to get that paper to stay flat. There are people that don't tape the tops and bottoms, and boy, I admire them. I can't do it. I have to tape it. Here's the deal: I use. Oop, that wasn't very good. Look what I did there. I missed the whole thing. So let's back up. There are people that can do a couple of pieces of tape in the middle and not tape the tops and bottoms. I'm not one of those people I need to tape uh, with two pieces of tape. The good news though is, I wanna say almost 100% of the time, I have good edges and good seams. So it's worth another two cents worth of tape to be able to, um, to guarantee that I'm gonna get good uh, edges. Are they good 100% of the time? No, but they're good a really most of the time. Now. The bottom, because of the curvature, depending on how long that um, how uh, long that paper is, is going to determine how much you need to push to try to get uh, the little blemishes away on the bottom. And um, what I also will do is take a cloth, or I can just use my um, my glove, and sort of. Push that against the cloth to make sure that I've got nice and flat. And that looks pretty good. Then I'll take my wide tape, and this is where I put a lot of pressure on the tape. And we'll pull this really tight. Here's one of the most important parts on getting a perfect edge, a perfect seam. First off, that paper has to be really flat around the, the tumbler, and it has to be even, meaning you can't have a little area that's popped up, so it's gotta be really flat. But then, if you'll look, there are two seams. There's one outer seam um, that's the top piece, and then the under seam, and both seams are really important. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to 
fine. See how I'm finding that seam right there? I hope you can see it. And once I find that inner seam, I'm pushing hard, like almost to the point of, of um, ripping the, the tape. Sometimes I will pull the tape off a little bit. I do that all the way up a couple of times, make sure it's in there really, really good. And then I come around to the bottom and I do the same with the, the outer one. Get it really, really nice and tight. And then I'll take my little tool here. I don't know where I got it from. It might have been like Lowe's or Home Depot and push it. Now here is the big key to especially blacks. The top right here, the bottom as well, but the top. So what you want to do is go back to the top and get those edges really, 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 really tight. Do the same down here. Come back and get those really, really tight. All right. So that is wrapped and ready to go. Now, one last thing that I do, and I don't think I've ever talked about this before. I use two different gloves. I don't know why. Actually, I do know why. This glove is looser and easier. I think it was a Harbor Freight glove. Um, so I can move. This one is, uh, is a little bit thicker, and I can do a couple of different things with it. So what I'll do is I'll then take the, um, the tumbler and roll my hand around it with the paper, especially this bottom. Really roll that tight to make sure that I got everything down. Sometimes the tape will roll a little bit, that's okay. And then we're gonna put it in the, um, in the press. So let's do that. Okay, so let's press this thing. I have my temperature on this tumbler press is 365 degrees. I've got it set at 50 seconds. I'm gonna go over my, my seams one last little time just to make sure they're nice and flat on there. And then what I do is I set, if you'll notice in this tumbler press, there's a section of the heating element right now where the, the, the top portion has come up. And when I first turn it on, uh, it bubbles up a little bit, but it comes down. I never leave this plugged in when I'm not using it. And even when that wasn't happening, that is a, a bit of safety advice that I recommend to everyone. Don't leave it um, plugged in. I put this thing in at the nine o'clock position and then close it. And you can see just a little teeny bit of pressure on there. And I will run 365 degrees for 50 seconds. If you notice a little bit of, of smoke is coming out, that's always been the case. That's not because of that little uh, section of the heating element. I've always had a little bit come out. It might be a little bit more now than, than it used to be, but I think it's, uh, it's about the same. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but the temperature dropped to about 340 something, maybe 350. I take that calculation into the 50 seconds. So I don't add time. I don't start my countdown when it gets back to 365. That drop and increase all happens within that first 50 seconds. That is what I do to get the perfect time, uh, temperature and pressure to get the perfect wax. Okay, so now I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna rotate it 180 degrees and I'm gonna do another 50 seconds. You see this popped up to 367, but it's back down to 365. I normally use a mask because I'm normally doing 10 to 15 of them at a time. So I'm not doing that right now, but but normally I do that. So this second press is also at 50 seconds. Uh, I rotated 180 degrees. So basically I'm doing the, the opposite side now. So this second press, my uh, piece of tape is in the three o'clock position. And then my third press, I will do 90 degrees and that piece of tape will be at the six o'clock position. And this, la this third and fourth press are at 25 seconds. I'm pretty consistent on the heating element on um, temperature, so I don't have to do any additional um, presses for the ends. Uh, my edges are actually a little bit warmer than the center, but not enough to cause any challenges. So this will only be for 25 seconds. I don't take the time to reset it. I just wait till it gets to 25 and turn it off. And then 180 degrees and that final uh, position. And so um, we'll see what, what this does. This will be uh, at the 12 o'clock position for 25 seconds. 
and 25 seconds this time. So we pull this out and then I'm going to show you what I do. I'm going to turn this off and slide this over to the side for a second. And I'll show you what I typically do um, with the, uh, with unwrapping it. I'll take my right glove off and, um, and get rid of the, the top and then turn around and get rid of this bottom. And then I prefer to peel most of the tape hot because it's just so much easier for me. This centerpiece, I'll come and I'll, I'll pull that tape right there and hold my thumb just below it and peel up. And that time it didn't work, so I'll just go under here and pull this up. And then what I'll do is pull this mostly down and then leave that for the amount of time that it takes to do another um, tumbler. No, and I'll tell you that I started doing this because I was making uh, some of these tumblers and um, I took the paper, I, I, I took the tape off as soon as it came out, but I took the paper off pretty quickly and it ghosted a little bit because it didn't have time to cool down enough. So now I usually leave this uh, for, um, for about 150 seconds, like I say, while I'm doing another um, tumbler. Okay, so my couple of minutes, minute and a half has elapsed. And then what I'll do is just peel that last piece off. Peeling most of it hot is just so much easier for me. And then what I'll do is pick it up, pull this and do that. And there we have a solid black tumbler. Now there are a couple of little imperfections in the, in the tumbler, but that was from like, there was a, there was a, 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 it looked like a hair that had gotten into the original design. That was one of the reasons I didn't do it. And there's a little teeny mark here that I think might have been in the uh, paper. But if you'll look, this is solid black the whole way around. Where's our, where's our um, seam? I don't know where our seam is. I think, yeah, the seam is right here. You can barely tell a little bit up here. Certainly not worth noting, but that is the, uh, that's the seam. So we're going to do one more. It's going to be on a matte tumbler. I won't go through the, the process on the, uh, the tumbler press. We'll, let me do it real quick. And then we will, um, we'll share the uh, final thoughts. Okay. We just finished the, um, the matte in black and, uh, Brent Kirkland in our Facebook group, uh, actually, uh, and I were talking the other day about how, excuse me, how blacks, uh, how matte tumblers are so much easier and certainly with blacks they are as well. So here is the, the finished black and, um, I can't see, oh, there it is. There's where the seam is. Might be able to see a little bit, but certainly that's with an, an acceptable range. And I sell these as a set, uh, the designs. And I will tell you, these look really fantastic. The, the guys, the black ones on a, on matte tumblers, and then the, um, the bride ones on the, the shimmer, not the glitter, but the shimmer tumblers. And they just, um, they, uh, they come out really, really great. There's a neat little funny sayings on the back. Um, but there's, I think I have two listings for these. One has basically, I think these four, maybe a one or two more. And then another one has the mother of the bride and the father of the bride and all that. But I found that the white ones look really great on the, the shimmer and the black ones on the, um, on the mat. Once again, the mat is certainly easier but here's the, here's the backs. And uh, I don't think you can, you can tell a difference. So again, I wish there were a special tool or a special um, magic wand that could give you perfect blacks. At the end of the day, it is about the perfect time, temperature and pressure. And again, the good news is once you get that for a black, that's what you use for everything. 
Uh, and then you've got to make sure that you do really good taping um, and uh, get that paper tight against the tumbler and uh, get the seams and really get those down. If you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. If you've not subscribed to the channel, definitely subscribe to the channel. We have a Facebook group. Amazing people uh, are in that group. They give me advice and ideas and help me out. Um, a lot. Uh, the, a link for the Facebook group will be in the description. But I do ask, you have to answer the questions and agree to the group rules. You just need to do that. That's what keeps the group good. So, again, subscribe, notification bell, all that good stuff. So, blacks can be a beast, and reds too, and other solid darker colors, but they can be conquered. And the trick is all of the above. So, good luck, test test, test. Green is too little. Brown is too much. Find that perfect scenario. Use old ones as tests and you'll get there. So thank you so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. Hey everybody and welcome. If this is your first time, it does get a little bit, uh, 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 too roundy, roundy. That's what keeps the good. You, you, you. I think we're good. I think we're good. Mm -hmm. uh, damn it. My name's Roy. If if you, it get. Uh, uh. Okay. Now that we've got it trimmed, where am I looking? Where am I looking? Excuse me. Wow. <laughs>